uh, someone asked about applications of AI. And so I had a wonderful afternoon reading the proceedings of the Applied AI Conference for the last few years. And I made a list of some of the things that I th came across or thought up. Uh, I think I already mentioned the thing about the oil drill bits before, right? That uh, there are like three people in the world that know if you have a, a, um, a deep oil well, like they, have, they do this incredible stuff where like they drill down for like a mile and a half to get oil. Like they have this thing that's kind of floating in the ocean, but then there's this big thing that goes down and then drills into the bottom of the ocean and down for like another mile and then oil comes out and most of it goes into tankers and gets taken away. Um, so you're like trying to do this drilling and uh, uh, the bit gets stuck. And so every hour that this platform is not producing is costing you, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so they fly in somebody who specializes in getting the bit unstuck. I thought I talked about this the first day of class. And anyway, so uh, it's kind of expensive to have the well not doing anything while they're flying the guy in. And there aren't very many of them, and then they get old and die. And then like, OK, who's going to unstick the bit now? Um, so they built an AI system that uh, like they watch what this guy does intently, like a hawk, for two years. And then they code it up um, in inference rules, like, if this is the situation, then try this. Um, and they built this system that like does this guy's job. Um, and it saves them oodles of money, because now instead of having to fly the guy in, they just run the system. and. It unsticks the bit, and they're all very happy. So that's like a totally random thing. Like I never would have thought that that was a problem that needed like to be solved by AI, but like somebody had that problem. Um, there was a paper on uh, 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 this was the days before we had smartphones, but we did have they did have camera phones. This is so this is just like just, just pre iPhone. You take a picture. It's a it's uh, this was a Japanese company that had salespeople that would go to people's houses and work with them to develop a customized uh, skin product sale. And uh, you take a picture of somebody's skin with the phone and send the photo back. And there's an AI system that analyzes the picture and figures out the person's skin characteristics and then recommends the right cosmetics for them. Like, OK, another problem I didn't know we had, but uh, it, I thought rather interesting. Uh, Google News, you've probably seen. Like this is an AI system that figures out what's going on and, and is careful to show you only one article about each important story and tries to figure out what are the most important ones. And in fact, depending on what your feelings are about privacy, you can like tell Google what you're interested in, and then it'll put the interesting ones at the top and give you more of them and stuff like that. Um, a couple papers on fraud detection. Um, I, I saw a talk by some NASDAQ folks that talked about uh, detecting insider trading. Um, using AI. There was a paper recently on uh, fraud detection for racetrack betting. I don't know anything about that, of course, but uh, apparently there's some people who don't always follow the rules. Uh, a graduate, a master's graduate from UNH has just got a job with, with Kiva Systems. Uh, you guys know about Kiva? They just got bought by Amazon for like $700 million. Um, uh, yeah, there we are. They build these cute little robots. I'm sure they have a video we can watch. They build, so the idea is that in order, for, like when you order something from Amazon, uh, it's, uh, there's someone who has to go and get the item off the shelf and put it in the box. And you want to hire as few of those people as possible because, like, their jobs suck, and they have health plans and you know 401k stuff. So you want to. So instead, you have the shelves come to the person, so that you just the people can just sit around, and the shelves come, and there's a laser pointer that says, "Pick this thing." Um, I got to. The, I got. Uh, Oh, wow, that looks fun. But we don't have time for a goof off. Let's hear more about their product. Learn more. Oh, where are the videos? Come on. I'm sorry. I thought there would be fun videos. Go back. I think it should be fun. Oh, this, is, this, is, this, looks, this looks good. 
Luckily, we can't hear the sound. Thank God. If I plug this in, are we going to... Well, we'll oh. <laughs> Bad things happened last time we tried to use the sound. Um, so they build these bookshelves, and then the, um, there are these robots that go and move the shelves around. Um, yeah, so that's what the robots look like. And the person could just hang out. There's a little laser pointer saying which thing to get. So the shelves come to the person. Anyway, they're down in Massachusetts, and there's UNH grads going to work for them. The robots are so accurate that they start the tires, put these lines on the floor where, where they tend to go. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, so they're the shelves going to the people. Uh, and you need to make sure that by the time the shelves get to the person, they're all lined up for the same box, like all the items for the, they go in the same box. Um, so if you ever ordered anything from Zappos, they, do the, they, they use this system. Um, so anyway, it, it saves a whole bunch of time, uh, meaning a whole bunch of people. Uh, so that, that's a kind of a cool application. Uh, there was an interesting article by the folks that do the mo body media band. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this. There's a huge slew of startups in this area. It's a little bracelet that you wear, and it figures out what you're doing and tells you at the end of the day, like, how many calories have you burned? Uh, yeah, here's this little armband that you wear. Anyway, they do, they've done an incredible amount of offline training, and given they have seven sensors there, they have uh, skin conductance, um, they have uh, temperature. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, they, they, have, they have seven features that they measure at 32 hertz, and that, they turn that into 500 features, which they do for activity classification. So they can tell if you're walking upstairs, if you're sitting on the couch, if you're driving. They, have a lot of, they, they did a lot of work to try and distinguish sitting on the couch from driving. Um, Although it doesn't matter that much because you have about the same calorie expenditure in both, but it's a little different. Um, anyway, they, they classify what you're doing, and uh, uh, apparently, if you're like, there are various uh, health conditions where it like really helps to have all this data, and they can get it off of just very few sensors because they're doing uh, this very sophisticated classification um, to tell what you're doing. Uh, so that's a, like an application I wouldn't have thought of. Uh, this, this is a system that a friend of mine is doing for NASA um, that's for pilots of aircraft. Um, it, when something goes wrong, it tells you where the nearest airports are um, for landing, for doing an emergency landing. Uh, and it takes into account not just like what are the closest airports, but given what's broken on your plane and how the plane can fly, like maybe you can't turn right, for example, or maybe you're descending very rapidly, or maybe you're very unstable and there are thunderstorms over there, so you don't want to go through the turbulence and the thunderstorms. Um, it figures out how you would have to fly to get to each airport and figures out which one poses less risk to both you and the people on the ground. Um, so it's a really cool uh, emergency landing planner. Um, and uh, they've done it in, they've used it in trials with uh, uh, 777 pilots uh, who love it, and they're trying to convince the manufacturer to start making it. Um, uh, there's been a lot of controversy about grading, automated grading. So, uh, like for standardized tests, I guess they're tests where you actually write essays, and they have humans that read them and assign them grades. Um, and they've done tests where they have computers grade them. And the computers disagree with the humans no more than the people disagree with each other. Um, so that's kind of amazing, I think. Um, this is a program that's deployed in the city of Tokyo, which has very high property values. And the, so the city gets a lot of money through property tax. And you're supposed to tell the city if you like make your building bigger and better, 
Or if a building gets demolished, you're supposed to tell the city so that they adjust your tax accordingly. Um, and the Japanese are very good at like, trying to get everything right. Uh, like, uh, so they have a program that, uh, given aerial imagery of the city, uh, computes uh, all the shapes of the buildings and compares it with what they thought last year to figure out what's changed. And they do better than humans. And it's extremely fast as well. They need two shots of each building so that they can get height information. Um, but it's all automated, uh, which I think is just unbelievably amazing. Anyway, so this is just an example of some, uh, some things that you may not have thought of that are using AI today. Um, there's an ICRA workshop on uh, tasks that they need done for the Fukushima uh, decommissioning. Um, they say it's going to take 25 years, um, and it's very challenging because a lot of the stuff is underwater uh, in like murky water, and there's rubble everywhere, so it's very hard to get around. So they're going to, because it's such a long process, they're willing to fund the development of new robotics technology uh, to, for this one application, and, and like, it's going to cost them lots and lots of money. So anyway, so that's just uh, just to answer this question of some applications. 